there was a blank lurking behind those eyes. A malice. There was a malice lurking behind those eyes. We are going all the way back here. Like a trap ready to spring. Luca felt the weight of Nuncrete's hand on his shoulder. Something wasn't right. He didn't know why, but something was telling Luca to get out of there. I just want all this to be over. Of course, I'm sure it will work out soon enough. I should get going. I told Roxy I'd check for Rolo at the treehouse. Luca twisted free of Nuncrete's grasp. Of course. Ooh, Luca. You know your dad and I were good friends back in the day. You can come to me with anything. No, he cannot. Anything at all. Okay, bye! This is when they talk about the sign. Who is this other dog? The festival decorations are a bit humdrum. Now, if I were to throw a festival, it would be a thing to behold. I agree. This is all more than a little sad. It's worse than sad. It's boring. What if we did a little something to spice things up? I'm listening. You know that festival sign waiting to be unveiled? It would be a shame if someone... The two scurried off, eagerly formulating a plan. You know, something I have to say, I don't like that all of the dogs in the game are kind of bad. <laughs> what did the developers have against dogs? Oh, wait, let's go talk to Reading Lady. Does she have something to say? Because she always predicts the future. He looked down and muttered in a gruff voice. Mama always told me my problems would look smaller once I grew up. But my problems always seem to grow right along with me. Heavens, I sense big trouble ahead. Oh my god, is that a reference to the fact that frickin' Sharper Valentine shrunk and became a puppy? Identify yourself, please. Nellie Moodwill. I work here now. I am unable to locate you on our staff roll. Oh, I don't officially start until tomorrow. Mr. Kerr said I could come in early tonight to get a few things done. Hold, please. Clearance authorized. Thank you. Our harvest awaits. That's creepy as hell. Ooh, I hope something doesn't happen to her. Oh, I can't talk to the clipboard? Okay. Whoa! You could get a wrench to the noggin sneaking up on a guy like that. Don't scare a man while he's junkin, Sonny. Evening, Jeff. Isn't it kind of late to be junkin? I might as well ask the same thing of you. Find anything good? But ever since perennial harvest moved in, even the junk is trash. You can learn a lot about a person by looking at what they throw away. But this bunch, it's all shredded papers and coffee cups. Decaf coffee, by the way. We learned that about the clipboards, too. Well, I'd better get going. I didn't see nothing if you didn't see nothing. See what? Exactly. Jeff. Okay, I can't do anything with him. Oh, I need to talk to the fox kid because he's always got a lot of information. To no, I can't. All right, I also want to see if there's any more fishing to do. Rolo. <sighs> Rolo, wherever you are, I hope you're okay. Luca felt his eyes getting heavy and plopped into the beanbag. This is not good. He conceded to its lumpy embrace. Or... Is this this? Once again, Luca found himself in a vast black expanse. This, yeah, this is the one where Beck had gray hair. This time, he knew exactly where to go. He took a single confident step forward. The world flickered and pulsed. He found himself standing in front of the frigid air of a blazing campfire. The source. He plopped down cross-legged and gazed into the cold flame. Soon enough, the fire began to die out, popping sporadically, until all that was left was a single ember. Lucas stood up and dusted himself off. He plucked the glowing ember from the cold ash, examined it, and slid it into his pocket, a keepsake. The voice of his father spoke behind him. You made me proud, buckaroo. Luca turned to face him. Dad, what is this place? A warm grin grew across his father's face. 
a place where everything that has been and everything that could be all wait together. Luca found himself staring at his father's face, trying as hard as he could to memorize every single detail. Wait? For what? Another voice spoke out as Luca's doppelganger stepped forward. The doppelganger thing still has me a bit puzzled. That's up to you. Without knowing why, Luca began to weep. I'm trying to remember. Did the doppelganger only show up on this path, or have we seen the doppelganger in multiple paths? Is... is any of this real? Are you real? Luca's father bent down to smudge away a tear. Of course. I'm as real as the part of you that misses me. Luca turned to look at the older version of himself. And you? The doppelganger choked back tears. I'm as real as the part of you that's angry he's gone. Does that make sense? Through his tears, Luca laughed. <laughs> I think so. His father pulled him in for an embrace. Time to go, buckaroo. Luca was startled from his dream by a banging on the floor. Are you in there? A commanding voice rumbled from below. Uh-oh. Just as Luca sprang to lock the entry hatch, the door knocked open. <laughs> Chapter 5. Dangers big and small. Luca stumbled back. He heard the rope ladder creak under significant oh, weight. Oh, it's none creep. Keeping his eyes fixed on the hatch, he inched backward to the balcony. As his hand grasped the door handle, Luca froze. A large figure clumsily wriggled up through the hole. Yeah, it's none creep. Oh. No. Wait, what the? Who is this? Stop right there or I'll... Uh, what? Rolo's dad? Or is it Rolo? Sheesh, I know it's dark and all, but I figured you'd recognize me. Who are you? The large figure cocked its head inquisitively. I think it's Rolo. Stop now or I'll clobber you with a baseball bat. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Take it easy. Luca, you need to get your eyes checked. It's me, Rolo. What the fuck? Nice try, but I know you aren't Rolo. You're like one of his random uncles or something. Where is he? <laughs> Uncle? Luca, quit messing around. It's me. If it really is you, prove it. Flaming chicken coop, Luca. Luca's jaw dropped. What the hell? He peered more closely at the man standing in front of him. Something about him was undeniably Rolo, only bigger, older, changed. How? What happened to you? When I was running away, I ran into more people in those yellow suits. Oh, wait. Yeah, this. Yeah, he was a. That's. Okay, I got it wrong. This was not... This is the path where he didn't go by himself. He went with Rolo. Rolo escaped and went missing. Oh, that's right. This is the path where Rolo escaped and went missing. And then Beck and him went to the other place. And they met up with Iggy and... I forget the rhinoceros's name. And then Beck tickled iggy and iggy ran away and kicked the stuff into beck's hair so beck's hair is gray right now and rollo had been missing because they went out to go find him he was okay he was being tested on they grabbed me and dragged me away wait where where did they take you don't know they threw a bag over my head it was cold and smelled like a swimming pool i think it was an underground lab or something they take they made my hands all big look Rolo proudly presented his hands to Luca. Pretty sweet, right? I mean, it wouldn't be my first pick for a superpower, but beggars can't be choosers. Rolo, it wasn't just your hands. My feet, too? Dang, Pa made my, just made me new shoes. Wait, Luca, why are you so small? Luca moved to the side and pointed Rolo to his reflection in the balcony window. 
What the? His hands shot up to his face. To be fair, this is how I feel about my 13 year old sometimes. I swear he goes to bed one size and then he wakes up and he's like two feet taller. If you need help finding the cooking and fishing charms, let me know. I Yeah, I'll let you know. Um, I'm going to try and finish the story first and then work on that. Holy Toledo. Rollo, what did they do to you? They made me drink some sort of green, green crud. Ew. Actually, it wasn't too bad. It kind of tasted like licorice. Uh, hold on. The stuff tastes like licorice. Why, though? Is the licorice that the kid's been eating this whole time keeping him small? Or did he just really like the flavor? And then I sort of smashed open my cage and escaped. Whoa, you smashed open a cage? Kinda. At least I think I did. It's all a bit of a blur. They had you in a cage. Who are these people? I don't know who did this to you, but we're going to fix it. Fix it? This is awesome. Well, I'm just glad you're safe now. Luca, you don't need to worry about me. Yeah, he made them take... Yeah, that makes sense. Sure, I got snatched, but look at it this way. I got snatched. I know where snatched people go. We can. F we may finally have a lead on what happened to your family. Wait, is this the timeline where grandma is missing too? Because I think there was a timeline that she was missing. Maybe you're right, but this all seems dangerous. Danger. Ha! Huh. Rollo shadow boxed a few jabs. <laughs> I'll take them all on. Oh, she's got a hat. Hey, fellas, what's up? With a yelp, Rollo dove behind Luca. Huh. Did I come at a bad time? Who the heck are you? Oh, that's right. They wouldn't have met in this timeline. I like how he said he was going to take everyone on and then hid behind his tiny friend. This is Beck. Sorry, something truly bizarre just happened and I need help. I didn't know where else to go. So you're just hanging out in here with your large adult friend? <laughs> uh, no, this is my buddy Rolo. Uh, this is your missing friend? Uh, one and the same. He seems a little old? I'll have you know this is a recent development. What the heck does that mean? Oh, I'm sorry. You're the one who just showed up out of nowhere. So we'll be asking the questions here. That's fair. How did you find us? Your silly little treehouse? I think you mean our city little, silly little mission control. I hate to break it to you, but your secret path isn't so secret. And I can hear your racket from a mile away. See, Luca, this is why we need to improve security around here. Which he did in another timeline. Not now, Rolo. Beck, you said something bizarre happened? Yeah, but... She shot a nervous glance at Rolo. Anything you say around me can be said around Rolo. This has been a weird day all around, hasn't it? Yup. Beck's eyes narrowed. Okay, so it all started when I made it back home. My first order of business was to try to salvage my hair. So I dyed it with some stuff from the chemistry set my mom gave me. Okay, just need to play it cool and hope no one notices. Notices what? Oh, nothing. I was just... Come over here and let me have a look. Oh, honey, what in the world did you do to your hair? I just kind of felt like a change. This is going to take forever to grow out. You were the one who said that change was a good thing, right? I was talking about your mother's new job. I was talking about us moving. Well, I guess I just took your lesson to heart. Alona tried to put on a smile. But I forget, I came up here to tell you that Nellie had to go into work. Tonight, her and Mr. Kerr decided to be it would be good for her to get some things done before tomorrow. Yeah, you can get you can do whispers in Twitter. A Twitter? Yeah, that's totally where we are right now. That guy seems like a grade A creep. Beck? He is. Him and his weird cult of personality? You are not going to ruin this job for Nellie. It means too much to her. Oh, I know exactly how much it means to her. It means enough for her to exile her daughter to this po po blah 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 blah. podunk town. This place sucks. 
people are weird. You just don't know them yet. It's always cold. We're in the mountains. You'll get used to it. I can't even pick up a single decent station on the radio. It's all banjo music and farm reports. Never mind. You know I grew up in a town not different from this one. Is that why you're better at talking to plants than people? Okay. So here's what we're going to do. First of all, you're grounded. What? In the morning, I'll have Nellie come and see what we can do about fixing your hair. You need to look presentable for the festival. But not another peep. She sighed and after a moment looked down at Beck sympathetically. I know moving is hard, honey, but that doesn't mean you have to make yourself miserable all the time. Other people seem to have that covered for me. Oh, and if you decide to rebel by dyeing your hair more... She flashed a sly grin and tussled Beck's hair. I'll just shave it off for you. Oh my god, mom. Think of how rebellious you'll look then. Very funny. Thanks. Good night, sweetie. Good night, mom. Wait, wait, wait. First of all, this town does not suck. Second, you need help because you got grounded? Uh, no. I'm sorry you got into trouble. My, it's my fault. Little bit. It's my fault your hair got screwed up in the first place. Oh, don't worry about it. I actually kind of like this look. Great. Can we get back to the story now? The next part is a bit important. I have this radio I upgraded with my mom, and I was too angry to sleep. And I was too angry to... Oh, wait. I had this radio I upgraded with my mom, and I was too angry to sleep. So I tried to dial into something worth listening to. Oh, that's right. I forgot about her radio. Mr. Kerr, are you there? Mr. Kerr. Yes, I'm busy. What is it? Apologies. I have the founder on the line. Patch him through immediately. One moment. Hello, sir. It's so nice to hear from you. Skip the pleasantries. Oh, that's right, because he's still a little kid. What's your report on our new lead researcher of deep engineering? Oh, that that's the mom's job. Okay. Nellie Moodwill seems to be integrating nicely. At this very moment, she's working to help us meet our deadline. She offered to work overtime before I even had the chance to suggest it. Excellent. And you have faith that she's capable of finishing the work left by her predecessor? The predecessor that we found in the giant trash bin at the beginning of the game? Her work must be complete before the festival. I will make sure she stays day and night until it's completed. Good. You know how I feel about loose ends. Yes, sir. Once she's finished the work, we need to make a de determination regarding her long-term prospects in the company. Immediately, sir. I usually have more time to fully bring people into the fold. We are in the end game, Bill. After your failures with Dr. Prescott, I can't afford to take any risks. Of course, sir. No loose ends, sir. Once she finishes the work, she will either leave the office completely committed to perennial harvest, or she won't leave at all. Perfect. Sir, if I might suggest, maybe we should delay just for a bit. Oh? It's just, we seem to be rushing to hit this festival deadline, and rushing into things has caused some issues in the past. I see. Please understand that I just want what's best for you. I'm eternally grateful for all that you've done for me. Bill, I'll make this very clear for you. I brought you in to make things run smoothly. Not to have opinions. Of course, sir. Chin up, Bill. You are only a few days away from having everything you ever dreamed of. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Whoa. Yeah. So, just so we're clear, when they said loose ends, they were talking about murder, right? Like, actually killing someone? Capital murder? Luca gave Rollo a quick elbow to the ribs. Who's this founder? I was hoping you guys would know. Not as far as we know, Kerr is the top banana at Perennial Harvest. He sounded scared of this founder guy. So we have an even topper banana on the field? What the hell is my mom caught up in? Has she talked about the job much? Not really. She said she was going to come in and continue the work of someone she respected. Luca, do you think that body at the warehouse was the person Beck mo Beck's mom came to replace? That would make sense. Beck, it seems like Nellie's predecessor got um loose-ended. Okay, so we need to get your mom out of there before the festival happens. 
That's two days away. We won't just come home after work. The creep on the radio said they were going to hold her there until then. So if she's not coming out, we got to go in and get her. Beck flicked a large sheet of paper out of her pocket and slammed it on the floor. Maybe this will help. You have blueprints? Well, it's really just a welcome map for my mom's PH orientation day. But it shows the layout. Oh, that's nice. That's handy. Sure looks like blueprints to me. Look, here's the reception area. There's a big room marked Founder's Office. It even has the exits marked. Guys, guys, guys. You realize what this is, right? Polo started to wiggle with excitement. I think we're heisting. This is officially a heist. I love that he's, he's like an adult in a little kid's, or a, a little kid in an adult's body. The heist. Oh, we're heisting. They spent the night's end huddled around that small map, formulating a plan to infiltrate the headquarters of Perennial Harvest. It would be no small feat, a modern facility equipped with all manner of technology. Not to mention the swarm of clipboards that would most certainly be scattered throughout. By the time the sun began to peek through the car window used as a makeshift balcony door, all were in agreement. This could just work. The final day before the festival would be used to prepare. They'd need to pull every resource at their disposal, pull every favor with a thread. Even enlist some unsavory characters around town with important tasks only they were suited for. Luckily, there was enough ill will and mistrust toward Perennial Harvest that alliances could be found at a bargain. Luca, Beck, and Rollo rubbed their eyes as they exited the treehouse. They hadn't slept at all that night. There was no time. The festival was to begin in one day, and they each had their assignments. All right, quick recap. Rollo, you're going to talk to Roxy. Cordially. Without her and Fitz, this whole thing could go bust. Me? Cordial is my middle name. Isn't he gonna like scare the bejesus out of her by being huge? Uh-huh. And how do you plan to explain your new- he waved vaguely at Rolo's sizable figure. Circumstance. Bleh, she'll be so happy I'm alive, she won't even notice. Beck snorted an involuntary- And Beck, you're sure Alona won't just shoot this whole thing down when she hears it? Alona's the other mom, right? She'll listen. Once she understands the danger Nellie is in, the danger we're all in, the plan will make sense. Okay. That leaves me with Jeff, then Iggy. Oh yeah, Jeff is probably a good choice for this because he's been very against like all of the change this entire time. How are you going to persuade them? I'll think of something. They each looked at each other with sleepy confidence. Well, Godspeed. Enlist the help of Jeff. Enlist the help of Iggy and Tish. Ooh, interesting. We're bringing everyone together. Undaunted, he shook his head. Over? No. Endings are merely a state of mind. This doesn't end until I give up. Wow. I admire the conviction, but he, can he really pull through? Ooh, does that mean that this is like the end end? Or, uh, ever wondered why an agricultural company employs an army of survey takers? The clipboards, they say they're just trying to make us happy. Do they want to make us happy? Or just figure out what's, what makes us happy? An important distinction. Good point. Have I looked at, oh, I guess I can't, all right. Oh, here's Jeff. Hey Jeff, what can I do for you? Well, I know how much you hate perennial harvest. Hate's a strong word. Oh, sorry, I mean, I didn't say it was the wrong word. <laughs> gotcha. So we're going to break into their headquarters, and I thought you might be able to help. Jeff wheezed out a long snicker. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I thought you ki I knew you kids were all right. Great, so you'll the help? The joy in Jeff's face drained instantly. Not a chance. But give me one good reason I should risk my hiding and abetting you rascals. Looking into the sullen eyes of his would-be accomplice, Luca blurted out the first word that came to mind. Oh, God. Hide, junk, shit, fight, and crooked. I feel like fight and crooked are really good options here because the company is crooked. 
crooked. Ah, they're all crooks, like cockroaches. Stamp one out and another comes scurrying along to take its place. No? Luca wasn't ready. He shouted out. Fight. I've done enough fighting for one lifetime and more than my share of losing. Time's come to hang up the gloves, okay? Shit! Yeah, it's all shit. I still ain't helping. <laughs> and ain't that some shit. <laughs> oh, God. Junk! Yeah, what of it? Sonny, I've got more junk than a king has copper. Ain't interested. Hide? Jeff's brow perked up. What did you say? Go ahead and hide that. Sensing some traction, Luca carried on with figure. Oh, okay. The one that made the least sense actually makes the most sense. Not a bunch of kids do what needs to be done. We're not afraid. Jeff's scowl faded with a sigh. Say what you will about old Jeff, and they all do. But you'll never hear him say I hid from nothing. One good stomp of the foot was all Jeff needed to drive his point home. What was it you kids needed? Some sort of disguise. I've got just the thing. And while we're at it, that crate should come in handy. That ain't gonna be free, you know. I think five bags of sour gob should cover it. Put it on my tab. Luca offered out his open hand to seal the deal. This guy really likes sweets. With a firm and dusty grip, Jeff reciprocated. Done. Swing by first thing in the morning. Okay, so we got Jeff. I still need to find Iggy. They are not here. Hey, Titch, look who it is. Luca, are you here to try tickle us to death again? That was Beck. Look, just hear me out. Iggy raised an eyebrow suspiciously. We're listening. Iggy, I know we've both been giant bags of shit to each other. Iggy gave a reluctant shrug. You're not wrong. But lately, life has been kind of... Well, strange and hard both work. Hard, you know? Hard. Yeah, well, life's always hard. Get over it. We ain't interested. Okay. Knew they'd need he tried again. Bags of shit. Iggy gave a reluctant. Life has been kind of strange, you know? He considered the point. Things have been weird around here. So I'm offering a truce and asking for your help. What do you say we... Hide our hostilities, at least for now. Hide. We ain't no cowards. Buzz off. Oh, okay, I hit the wrong one. I actually meant to do the other one. Shit. Iggy gave a reluctant. Strange. Iggy considered the Break our hostilities, at least for now. We do like breaking things. Even if a truce means less breaking things. What if I told you there was a way to have a truce and break stuff? Go on. I need you to cause a distraction so I can sneak into Perennial Harvest HQ. A wild-eyed grin spread across Iggy's face. My, my, Luca Van Horn, I'm impressed. And after all this is done, maybe you and Tish can come hang out at the treehouse sometime. Iggy glanced over to Tish, who nodded in agreement. Fine. Not because we want to see your crappy treehouse. We just like to cause With chaos. A nod, Luca was off. Okay. Did you hear that, Tish? Iggy gazed up at Tish with a smile. He invited us to hang out at the treehouse. A single tear ran down Tish's cheek. What? <gasps> She's saying more than yup. I never expected this day to come. How wonderful. <coughs> she knows how to say more than yup. Chapter 7. <coughs> All right, sorry. Woo! All right. Into the hive. A good heist requires preparation. And thorough preparation takes time. Something they had precious little of. So far, everything was in order. Jeff, Iggy, and Tish all agreed to do their part. Beck radioed Luca that night with a simple and covert message. We are locked and loaded on my end. <clears throat> oh, so she got her mom to help too. And Rolo, after a lengthy confession, managed to persuade Roxy and Fitz to help. He stowed away in mission control for the night to avoid attracting attention. Rolo, being uniquely suited for the role, would be the first to breach perennial harvest. The outfit provided by Jeff wasn't perfect, 
but a convincing disguise is 10% wardrobe, 90% confidence. Oh god, what's he gonna show up in? Rolo took a few <laughs> vigorous breaths and shook out his arms. He's got a mustache! Best disguise ever. I was expecting like... I don't, I don't know what I was expecting, but I wasn't expecting just a mustache. <laughs> He's got a wrench, too. Just stay calm, Rolo. You can do this. Got your delivery here. Uh, delivery? I don't have anything in my notes about a delivery. One moment. I'm so sorry, but there's no delivery scheduled for this morning. Right. He had to think quick. That's because this goes directly to the founder. He asked that it be kept a secret. Hello, side, adjusting his tool belt. You know how the founder can be. I suppose we can leave this one off the records. Oh my god, we're going in! Okay. Our harvest awaits and such. With a stroke of his mustache. Rolo proceeded into the perennial harvest headquarters. Going in. Our harvest awaits. Package here for the founder. Oh, I didn't hear anything about... Yeah, this is a need-to-know kind of a thing. Um, I'll just check. He stared check. and flipped through the pages of his clipboard. This goes directly to the founder? I don't have time to fill you in. Oh, I see. If you could just complete this form. Rolo interrupted with urgency in his voice. Every time with the forms. Look, if you want to explain the f to the founder why I'm late, well, it's your funeral. I'm sorry? What did you say your name was again? I'm... Rolo panicked. Our harvest awaits. Sir? That's a restricted area. Excuse me, sir? Rolo, come on. Our harvest awaits. Rolo, ready to light this candle, Tish? Yup. Suck on this perennial ham fist. What was that? The distraction was enough for Rolo to regain his confidence. Just open the damn door. I've got a job to do. The clipboard fumbled around in a frenzy. I... I should check on that noise. Oh, come on. Just buzz me in already. Okay, okay. <laughs> that was close. Our harvest awaits. Hey, I figure, what in doubt, stick with the classics. Well, that was a close one, but you pulled it off. Nice work, Rolo. All right, everyone knows what to do? Yeah, de deep engineering is to the north. It was glitching. What else is new? I'll go with Beck. In case she needs some muscle. I'll head east to the founder's office. You two be safe. Locate the founder's office. All right, I guess we're going this way. That's odd. There's not even any cups for the water. I don't... I'm wondering if the clipboards even need sustenance. Oh god, this is like a maze hallway to nowhere. What's going on here? Is this some sort of mind game? <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> oh boy. Ah! That's right, because he doesn't know who Solomon is yet. Solomon stopped in his tracks. Luca, what are you doing here? It's a long story. Are you okay? A year of confusion flashed across Solomon's face. His words rushed out dramatically. No, I am most certainly not okay. Someone, some strange people grabbed me and... Were they in hazmat suits? Yes, how did you know? They brought me here and locked me up, and when they were distracted, I ran. Dang, okay, you should- No! You should stick with me, we've got a plan. Solomon's facade briefly faltered. We? Yeah, Rolo and Beck are headed to deep engineering. 
Thank heavens you found me. We've got to get out of here. Oh, no. We can't leave just yet, but they'll catch us again. I've got to do something first. When you were running, did you happen to see a door marked Founder? Founder? Why are you looking for him? I'm not. I just need to get into the office. Now that you mention it, I do think I saw a door that said Founder. It was just... No! It was just down this way? I to notice a plaque above the door. Knocking comes with consequences. Oh, here it is! Oh, Luca, you poor... You poor little bean. So it is. It's pretty lucky that I ran into you or else I might have missed it. Truly fortunate. Luca tried the handle. Locked. Solomon leaned forward to examine the mechanism. Regrettably, it seems to be some sort of electric lock. I don't see how you, how we could possibly defeat a lock like Luca that. smiled and looked at his watch. Just wait a minute. What is she doing? Oh, she's taking out the power. I don't know what sort of business you're up to, but I like it. She mined a quick hat tip and ambled off with a whistle. <laughs> Howdy. Good afternoon. The light on the keypad changed from red to green. How did you do that? It's good to have friends. Quick, let's get inside before someone stabats us. I'm... <gasps> Luca switched on his walkie-talkie. Oh my god, he's got darts all pointed at Augustus. I hate him. Rolo, I'm in. As expected, there's a control panel. Great timing. We're stuck at a locked door mark 24601. Need you to get us through. What if someone catches us? We should get out of here. I'm not leaving my friend, Solomon. On the computer screen, a green cursor blinked in a password field. Surely you don't have a way to get around the password. Hmm. Luca pecked out his best guess. Underground secrets. Oh wait, did he know about this in this timeline? The screen blinked to life. Columns of green numbers glowed on a black background. I'm getting so confused because I can't remember what things we did in what timeline anymore. How did you just guess that? Oh, this absurd password Rolo heard when he was down here before. Oh, that's right. That's how he did it. Okay. It's funny how someone arrogant enough to call themselves the founder uses such a basic password. Or they were thinking several moves ahead, not expecting anyone to do guess something simple. So simple. These villain types always end up outsmarting themselves. <laughs> Solomon's jaw clenched into a half smile. Your powers of deduction are as impressive as your luck. This is so absurd. Luca quickly scanned the columns for number 24601. Rolo, I think this should do it. Bingo, bango, doors open. Luca, you never fail to impress. What is that slippery loud even doing down here? We have friends whose mom have a friend whose mom is in trouble. We're here to get her out. I see. I think we're close. The next door is marked 13806. Once again, Luca scrutinized the numbers on the screen. In that moment of distraction, Solomon reached forward and pressed a large red button. Maybe this one opens the lock. Crap, we've got company. Hi, Squeegee. Yeah, their name is your name. That's true. How are you? Luca, must go faster. One sec. I think with all this noise. I can't think with all this noise. With his finger. Here it is. 13806. Go, go, go. First, these fumbling hands. My apologies, Luca. Mm -hmm. Don't beat yourself up. I know you were just trying to help me. He's such a sweet little bean. How are you today, Squeegee? I'm excited for next month. About to get chased by the clipboards. Here we go. Aw, oh, man. No water cups. <laughs> Rollo! Rollo, are you okay? Rollo, come in. 
Oh no. Mr. Kerr approached with a sneer and spoke into his walkie-talkie. You can turn off the alarms. They're trapped. With self-satisfaction, he called into the hallway. That, my dears, is a dead end. Nowhere to run. Rolla, where are you? Are you okay? Yeah, I think we lost them. Making our way back to Nelly's office. Oh! Wait, how'd they get in here? Okay, you two rabble rousers are coming with us. Nope. Get him, Roxy. Make a break for it. <laughs> the clipboards just stand there. Did that little shit just kick me? Don't stand there after them. Okay, I think that worked. Roxy and Fix have them on a wild goose chase. I am having trouble following what just happened. Like I said, it's good to have friends. Rolo, how long do you think Roxy can distract them? How long can Roxy keep someone so pissed off they can't see straight? Let's just say we've got time. Entering Nellie's office now. Oh, no. Mom. Oh, honey, what did you do to your hair? <laughs> That's right. I thought you'd be happy. I finally used the Young Chemist Lab kit. You sure have a knack for making me incredibly proud in the most frustrating ways. We need to get you out of here. We? Who's your adult friend? <laughs> you still got the stupid mustache. Remember when Beck asked what kind of person Rolo was and Luca just said he's Rolo? I maintain that's the most accurate answer. It, it really is. Oh, I'm not an adult. Adult. Ever heard of a growth spurt? <laughs> I had more of a growth spew. And no, that's not possible. Now we leaned over to examine his teeth. Substantial banding on the enamel of the molars consistent with Tempest liquamine exposure. Is that what you call the gulk they- the gulk? Gunk? They forced me to drink? You drank it? Oh. Oh no. They told me it was only being tested on plants. Oh, Beck, sweetie, I promise I didn't know. Mom, what the hell is going on at this place? I was brought here to work on the discovery of a lifetime. A novel chemical compound was discovered under beacon pines in a wellspring they call the Source. They named it Tempest Liquamine. It pulls energy from its surroundings in order to fundamentally alter matter's relationship to time. It pulls energy from its surroundings. And energy makes things warm. That's why everything's getting cold. It was the secret to Valentine's fertilizer. They harvested the source, infusing small amounts of Tempest Liquamine into the product. It worked wonders, drastically accelerating plant growth. Crops would be ready to harvest in a fraction of the time, but it led to complications. The foul harvest. Perennial harvest came in to clean up the mess to succeed where Valentine failed. But Tempest Liquamine is rebellious. Rebellious? You can think of it as a manifestation of change itself. It's volatile by its very nature. So the more you try to force it to do a specific thing, the more it resists. Yes, I can relate to that. <laughs> my role was to finish the work of my predecessor, Dr. Prescott, harnessing Tempest Liquamine to reliably manipulate an organism's age. Just imagine how many people we could feed. Mr. Kerr was very insistent that we achieve a successful result before today's festival. But you didn't, right? Really sighed. You know how much I love a good puzzle. I poured myself into this problem. It wasn't long until I discovered oddities in Mr. Prescott's notes. Oddities? They contained obvious errors, mistakes that someone of his reputation would never make. So I fixed them and... And now I get to replace my entire wardrobe? I really am truly sorry. Eh, those clothes were all hand-me-downs anyway. It sounds like Dr. Prescott figured it out, got cold feet, and intentionally sabotaged his own work. I had considered that possibility. I've sent a letter asking him to clarify his thinking. You're... You're not going to get a response. Mom, Dr. Prescott is dead. Care killed him. What? I overheard them talking about it on the radio. It's why we got to get you out of here. I just... Like now. Wait, the vial! I finally solved the chemical equation allowing direct control of aging. Mr. Kerr picked it up just before you came. All the more reason we gotta hightail it. 
Luca, we got Dr. Moodwill heading your way now. Roger that. Be careful. Oh my god. All right, everything's on track. And what is your plan for escape? We'll go over everything when we get there. In the meantime, maybe we can dig up some more info. Poor Luca. Malice 80 proof whiskey. What? what? I've heard that before. A hard drink for a hard man. Wow, even his alcohol is arrogant. Solomon muttered inaudibly. <laughs> I should just smother you right now. What was that? I said I shouldn't bother you right now. Don't be silly. You're no bother at all. Oh, God, Luca. I wish you were just a smidge smarter at the moment. Let's see what else this bad boy has on it. Security system. Time card logs. Payroll. You know, for being so evil, this guy sure is boring. Solomon once again muttered under his breath. Just you wait. Huh? Oh, nothing. Luca tugged on each of the cabinets. Dang, this must be good stuff. They're all locked. Perhaps he's not as careless as you expected. making sure that it looks like the founder was helping Kerr plan the festival why would oh my god I just realized something I was wondering why the books were on the chair <laughs> the books are on the chair because he can't reach the desk without them why would such a secretive leader be obsessed with a party only time will tell. Luca held his hand up to the ashtray. Still warm. He must have been here in here recently. Yeah. So recently. Luca, you're so close. All right, I guess there's nothing else to do but talk to him. I'm really sorry you got dragged into this mess, Solomon. You needn't worry about me. Well, I feel bad either way. We're going to get you out of this, I promise. With a subtle, quivering lip. A smile crawled across Solomon's face. They heard the trampling of frantic footsteps from the hallway. Lock it, lock it, lock it. No, don't lock it. Or not. That was close. When we left Nellie's office, it was swarming with clipboards. We barely got away. Did they follow you? Yep. Rollo. Before we started, before we start tossing blame around. It is possible someone ordered a pizza, right? We'd love to hear your thoughts. <laughs> Definitely not pizza. What now? Don't look at me. I'm officially retiring from the heisting business. We're so sorry for the inconvenience. We just have a few quick questions. Just let me think. Can someone watch the door? No! Of course. Y'all, I'm going to need you all to be paying a little bit better attention. I realized, I realized that I too missed this, but somebody please notice it. You know what pisses you off about the clipboards? What pisses you off about the clipboards? Everyone else, huddle up. <laughs> Oops. I think this little caper has gone on long enough. Solomon, no! Hush now, child. The adults are speaking. Dr. Moodwill, a brief reintroduction is in order. We've never met in person, but we have corresponded. You see, it was I who hired you. Solomon, the pathetic orphan child. The powerful and enigmatic founder. Sharper, the fallen progenitor who created this town. Perennial harvest, valentine fertilizer, all connected by a single thread, yours truly. <laughs> Would you like to take a quick survey? We'd love to hear your thoughts. Yeah. But that's- Her eyes searched the floor in thought. Solomon watched eagerly, waiting for the flicker of epiphany. With a sickened look, she peered into his soul. <laughs> yes, now you've got it. Tempest Liquamine. You discovered how to reverse the process. Solomon clapped with genuine delight. <laughs> the 
Very good, Dr. Moodwill. Very good. Though the discovery wasn't intentional. Oh, I wonder if the the doctor that they killed, this was his doing. Solomon glanced down, examining his youthful form. So instead of dying, he got turned into a puppy. And the effects went a little too far for my tastes. That's why you needed me to finish Dr. Prescott's work. Which you did admirably. Mr. Kurt, the vial, please. Kurt presented it with a theatrical twirl of the hand. Drop it on the floor! May I present to you the eighth wonder of the... Before he could finish, Rollo snatched the vial from Kerr's palm. Don't drink it, though. Wow, this sounds like pretty valuable stuff. Be careful, you fool. You have no idea what you have in your hand. Actually, we do. You just did a whole evil villain monologue thingy about it? Rollo casually tossed the vial to Luca. Oh, God. Gosh. <coughs> Maybe I'll have a taste. Luca tickled the vial mockingly. Seize him. Luca! Over here. Move another inch, and I smash it. She held it tightly behind her back. Solomon sighed, speaking in crisp, measured syllables. You have no plan. I'll smash it, I swear. Fine, risk killing us all. Or, if you're lucky, nothing happens. Then what? We capture you and grant you much less leniency. He pursed his lips leniency. with sincerity. But I give you my word, if you hand it over now, none of you will be harmed. A deep uncertainty washed over Beck. You're a smart girl, Beck. But there's no shame in being outwitted by someone smarter than you. We both know there's only one way this she ends. She looked to Nelly shakily, with a dispirited nod. Nelly sighed in defeat. But we still have Roxy, Fitz, Jeff, and Alona outside or possibly inside at this point, depending on how things are going. How many of them are there? There's five, Roxy, Fitz, Jeff, Alona. So there's four of them, plus they could take them if they all come in. Beck slowly approached Solomon. That's a good girl. Beck, don't do it. We can't trust that jerk. I'm sorry, he's right. With apprehension, Beck conceded. Solomon pocketed the vial and brushed off his shoulder with a sharp flick. Mr. Kurt, you have allowed yourself to be humiliated by a group of children. Report to my office tomorrow for a performance review. The blood drained from Kerr's face. Of course, sir. But first, you have a speech to make. Trot out there and give me the introduction I deserve. And don't forget to smile. Yes, sir. And to think all of this is thanks to the efforts of Mr. Van Horn. I don't understand. How is this all because of me? <laughs> I said Mr. Van Horn, silly child. Dr. Walt Van Horn, your father was always a thorn in my side. I offered him an opportunity to be part of something great, but the fool was blinded by righteousness. He even broke into my laboratory in an attempt to sabotage my work. Oh, maybe he's the reason he looks like a puppy. Solomon shook his head with gratification. But the universe has a funny way of correcting course. By meddling with a force he didn't understand, Walt showed me its true potential. As fate would have it, Luca, your father's dying act was to grant me eternal life. A muffled applause resonated faintly through the walls. Well, that's my cue. And the festivities and my subsequent ascension. I will return after... I will return to deal with you all after the festivities. Until then, I suggest you use this time to reflect on the magnitude of your failure. You three, keep post outside the door. Yeah, the other ones are still outside, I think. There's going to be a, a fight. Well, crap. I can't believe Beck sold us out like that. I'm not sure she had any other choice. So what now? What's the plan? I don't have one. Of course you do. You always have a plan. Rollo, you just need some time. Rollo, it's over. We lost. I don't know yet. Nellie was staring at the floor, deep in thought. Sorry, Luca. Give me a minute to call my mind. Is there anything else to look at before I talk to Beck? I don't... I, I don't think Beck actually sold them out. I do think there's something she has planned. 
just want to see if there's anything left to do here. Hey. I'm sorry, Luca. I did what I had to do. I know, it's just, we were so close. I've got a feeling that eventually Sol Solomon will get what's coming to him. Time wounds all heals. What? <laughs> well, it seems like less of an issue for now. Okay. Luca, there's something you should know. I know! What? After Mr. Kerr locked me in that office, I had nothing but time and curiosity. I poked around a bit, hoping to find a means of escape, but I found something else. A note, hidden in a false drawer. What sort of note? Dr. Prescott must have sensed his time at Perennial Harvest was growing short, so he left behind a letter with the hope that it would be found by his successor. It was a confession of sorts. He left it for me, but its contents... Luca, I think they were meant for you. What? Why did they... What did they say? It was about an incident with your mother. Dr. Prescott found her in his lab with a stolen key card. There was an accident. She had been exposed to extreme amounts of Tempest Liquamine. The color dropped from Luca's face. Did she... Is she... She survived. Dr. Prescott decided to help her recover. He no longer trusted Perennial Harvest, so he kept her whereabouts a secret. Over time, your mother led him to reconsider the purpose of scientific discovery. Yeah, that's how she grew old. Science is often at that vanguard of change, but that doesn't mean it's always right. He realized that no one should have control over something as powerful as time itself. I now believe that's why he began to intentionally sabotage his own work. And it cost him his life. That's a reasonable conclusion. Luca was overwhelmed with emotion. But if she's alive, where's she been? Where's she now? A sudden explosion. Oh from no! The hall. 